right, great nines. Um, in this section, we're going to look at um, the effect that a payment by debtor has on the accounting equation. Good. So here we're back with Kayle Borne. Um, and the transaction is Kayle Borne paid 600 Rand in settlement of his account, issued receipt 039. All right, so what is the source document? Duplicate receipt. Why is it the duplicate receipt? Because the original one is given to the debtor. So here in your um, answer sheet by source document, you write duplicate receipt. Um, so what happened here? We received money. What do we do with all money that we receive? We put it in the bank. Bank is an asset. So what happen, happens if I put more money in my bank account? It increases. So my bank asset increased with that 600 Rand that Labone paid us um, to settle his account. So under assets, um, under the amount you write plus 600 Rand and your reason is bank increase. Good. Where did we get this money from? Who gave it to us? The debtor or a debtor. Um, why did he give this money to us? Because he paid his debt. Now, remember, when we talk about um, debtors and their debt, we know that we group all of the debt transactions in the debtors control account. So what type of account is debtors control again? It's also an asset. So if a debtor pays back his debt, what happens to his debt? It becomes smaller. He owes us less. So therefore, his debt, the debtors debt decreases and as a result my debtors control asset will also decrease with that 600 rand so under assets we stay under assets because both these accounts that we are working with are asset accounts so under assets we will write plus minus 600 and what is my reason my debtors control asset decreases did anything happen to owner's equity? Did we work with an owner's equity account? No. So nothing happened there. Did we work with a liability account? No. So nothing happened there. We leave it blank or we can write a zero. Can you see at the end of this transaction that the net effect is basically zero? Why? Plus 600 minus 600 gives me zero. So one asset increased, but at the same time, another asset decreased. So the value, the total value of this business's assets did not change after this transaction because we dealt with two assets, one increased, the other one decreased. So the net effect is zero. Right, you can go and try to complete activity 10 and see how well you can remember what we've just discussed here. I'm going to go on to the last one that we're going to um, um, do before we move on to other um, work. We've, after this, we'll be done with accounting for a while. Um, now, what you must be able to do after, we are now finished with the CRJ, DJ, and DAJ, um, with all the payments by debtors, the, the sales to debtors, and the returns by debtors, is to put all of this now together. So if I give you now a combined exercise with transactions that must be recorded in the CRJ, the CPJ, DJ, and DAJ, you must be able to identify which journal must I take this specific transaction? And can you do it? Yes, you can. I've once again given you a little cheat sheet to work off. Um, and that's just to help you organize your thoughts. Um, what can you also do, great nines? I know that sometimes if you see this long exercise with lots of transactions, um, it may seem a little bit daunting. But just stay calm and and find a method that will work for you. There's basically two ways, and it depends entirely on, 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 on how or what works for you. Both of them are fine. Some students like to take the transactions from the top and 
do, do them or record them as they appear in date order. Um, so you will see the first transaction, okay, it's the owner giving a capital contribution that goes to the CRJ and you go and record it. The next one, you sold on credit to a debtor, okay, that's DJ, you go to the DJ and record it. That is perfectly fine and if you're happy to do that and you can cope with that, 100% and you go on and do it that way. The other one, maybe takes a little bit more time, but it's very helpful for, for students who sometimes feel a little bit overwhelmed with all these transactions. So I suggest you get yourself um, the number um, of colored cookies or pencils um, in line with the number of journals that you'll have to do. So for in this case, get four different colors. And then you take your exercise and as you go through, you highlight or you color in with a specific color for a specific journal. Now, um, that just helps you then at the end, when you then start completing your journals, to make sure, and that's easier to see, okay, all these transactions go to the CRJ, all these transactions go to the CPJ, and so forth. All right, now let's have a little look here. We've already in the previous presentation looked at the DJ and the DAJ um, key words that you can look out for that will tell you this is a transaction for the DJ or this is a transaction for the DAJ. I've now just made them in different colors to make it a bit easier for you. So let's just recap CRJ and CPJ we've done a long time ago. So we'll, we'll spend a bit of time on these two. So what typical transactions will we find in the CRJ with the keywords that can help you identify them as a CRJ transaction? First of all, the word cash sales. It can't go anywhere else but cash receipts journal. Um, if you see the words cash register roll, tells you it's CRJ. Issued a receipt, tells you CRJ. Interest received, um, you can get bank statement in the CRJ as well as in the CPJ, so that's one that you must be um, a, a little bit uh, careful um, for, um, but interest received will definitely be CRJ. Received an EFT payment. So if somebody pays us via EFT, we're receiving that payment, it's CRJ. If we render a service, now listen, this year we're focusing on um, uh, retail businesses, CRJ is for retail businesses um, or journals for retail businesses, but they might very well be a, a, a business that renders a service and sell stock. So just um, be on the lookout for that. And then if we, like in the dinosaur age, receive a check from somebody, remember if somebody pays with a check, gives a check to us, it's as good as cash. So that will also be a um, indication that this is a cash receipt journal transaction, CR type transaction. Good. What typical transactions will we find in the CPJ? If the people or business um, um, are very businesses are very ancient, then they will then we or if it's our business will still pay with a check. So bought something or paid something with a check or issued a check. Those will definitely be CPJ transactions. Then if we bought something or paid something via EFT or if we paid via direct deposit to someone else, that will be a CPJ transaction. And then if you see something that's on the bank statement that tells you that we pay interest or interest was charged on an overdue account perhaps, or bank charges that the bank charged us for managing our account. Those are all CPJ transactions. Now, grade nines, there's um, activity 11 to be completed. Um, there's also a full solution to this activity, but I first want you to go and do it and see how well you can remember what we've done so far this term um, with the new journals, as well as now incorporating the old journals that we've already dealt with in term one, and hopefully it will go very, very well. Let me know.